Welcome to my post-production room and I am James Nader and I'm going to be telling you about this picture here and how I took it from raw files into the finished image that you've seen on a calendar. So without further ado, let me talk about this picture. Let's talk about the Fuji FX and I'll see you on the other side. image which was a stopper for the Icelandic calendar campaign 2018 uh, whereby I went on location with three weeks so this picture I'll take you through the work there. So here we are in Lightroom and we've got a selection of pictures that were taken on the GFX 50S. And as you can see, it was a pretty rainy day. Oh, there you go, look at that. Very briefly, this is the tectonic plates where they're splitting in Iceland. That's why we chose to shoot Rurik there. Um, this is Iceland and this is America splitting and you can walk all the way down here. Just quickly want to point out how sharp the lens was and how sharp the capture was. So here we go, look at that. I mean, that is in pouring rain, that is in sleet and snow and wind. I mean, just look at that. The camera, absolutely fantastic. It's taken on the light from the flash, which is a pro photo um, battery pack. And we used it, and I used it to create a sense of underexposed background, theatrical. I know that I could pull this up in the develop module, which I'll show you briefly. And we've got some skies that we shot to put in here. And we'll do a little bit of a crop and take some of the pinkness out. But anyway, I just wanted to show you some of the raw files. There we go. There's some of the raw files that were captured by um, the Fuji, and you can quite plainly see that the weather was disgraceful. Anyway, this is the final image that we chose. The client selected this one because of the balance and poise, just slightly off center into the two thirds, but not on the actual two thirds there and there because that was too much um, for what they wanted to do with logos and banners and, and all the artwork they wanted to put around this. Um, anyway, so quickly into the develop module here. This is the part of the process that I will use just to make my quick selections over here. So I use a quick selection here and then I will make sure that I'll choose the image. And on this occasion, it's this image. So what we'll do is we go quickly into develop module. So my process really is to take this image here and then we take this image and we give it some basic grading and some attributes that will benefit the process in Photoshop afterwards. So I know from what I do here, how I'll be able to really enhance the picture in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do here, if we take that back there, is to bring up the shadows. So we don't want to burn them out and lose the detail, but we just bring them straight up like so without influencing the picture. So it's at that point there where it's starting to influence, where it's starting to influence his trousers, we stop. I will add a bit of clarity to it to bring back a bit of sharpness. We've got some sky that we're gonna be dropping over in Photoshop here. I wanna bring some of those colors up. So here, for example, we've got greens. They're quite bright, but down here, they're quite dark. That will be processed in Photoshop. And some of these will be enhanced. Um, anyway, so let's just take down on the saturation. Let's bring down some of those reds. Let's look at his face. So a bit pink in the face. Let's just bring down a little bit of the red, yeah. That's believable, not too much, because obviously skin has got a little bit of pinkness into it. I'll bring up some of the greens. You can see that just punch up a little bit without affecting his face. Yeah, that's cool. So here we are in Photoshop, and this is the picture that's been exported straight from Lightroom into a folder and now brought it in. It's got the basic sort of levels that I can work with. Now I know I've got an issue here and I, I can get around that, that's not a problem. So just to let you know, a lot of people work with adjustment layers. I particularly on this type of image won't use adjustment levels and layers because I tend to work destructively with this background because I know my process and I know by duplicating that I've got other things going on so I can keep those, rename them, switch those off. I've always got those as backup. Um, but essentially, this, this is just a quick process to let you see. So we've got the image here. It's obviously going to be kicking a ball. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the compositing of it or the grading of it. I just want to show you what I did. So, for example, I've taken this out 
I've enhanced these. So we go from that image to that image there. See how I've done that? This is essentially the same image here. So if you look at this area here, you watch when I click on there. So we have actually shaved in this area just there. It shaves in, if you can see that. And you can see the actual modification of the leather jacket. You can see that I've worked on it here using Liquify tool. Um, and you can see that I've just given it a bit more of a grade. So these have been brought up in Photoshop by using this tool, which is the uh, dodge tool. So I will be dodging across the area and pretty much painting with light lights. So on the picture, and I've done that here as well. Now, if you look down there in this area, we've got rid of that now with a cloning tool. Uh, so that's gone. We've cleaned out his legs. Haven't taken the creases out because I, I like them like that. And we've just slightly graded the face, but we've still got all this water going on here, which is great. It, you can see that it's snow. Um, so essentially, I've brought out the detail in here and given him a bit more sense of placement. So the next shot I wanted to show you was, um, okay, so we shot some clouds at the same time. You can see I've dropped those over. I put them on the layer and I've physically cut those out with... Um, masking and um, marquee tool here so I'll just use this tool up here quick selection or magic wand tool so I've done that I won't do that now but essentially cut around him and let's go back to the tool so essentially cut around him as you can see switch that off switch that on you can see that it works cleaned up his hair and you cut it in gently across here and you make it look believable so now if you look at that it's actually a nice looking shot and it's believable sky because it was shot at the same time. Um, the only thing is all of that rain started to disappear so I had to bring that in again. So we've got the rain PNG. So this is a file that I created using noise and motion blur. I will go into detail at a later date uh, in another video about how I created all of this from scratch. But this is a basic observational um, composite that gives you an idea of how good the quality of the GFX was and how it allowed me to, to work in extreme locations of wind, rain and sleet, coldness, teamwork, everything. The camera performed perfectly on the day. It shot pin sharp. Still, even in post-production, you can see how sharp that image is. I mean, look at that. There you go. That was shot. I can give you the, um, the f-stop and everything later on. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen as we go through it. But anyway, Without further ado, let's carry on. So we've put the rain in, but it's not quite right. Um, so what I would have to do is now because it's on the layer and it's been rasterized, I can go in and just cut it back a little bit. If we went to like a, oh, I don't know, 40%, 38%, and just cut it in a bit like this. So it's not really falling on his face and, and blocking the view. Just thinning it out in areas a little bit, softening it. You can layer it and create interest like that. But, I mean, it's quite intense there, so we just drop it back a little bit. I mean, that's what it looks like. But we drop it back to about something believable. To make it look like the flash has actually caught it. And that's essentially what I work with. And then the final look is that. So that was the final look. So if I was to flatten all of those, the final look would then become flattened. And then I would go into my filter for camera raw. So now I've got a clean image, it's layered, it's flattened, and I then start to work on this image. So I'm bringing that down, bringing the clarity up, a bit of texture, vibrance down a little bit, just to create a little bit more monochromatic, like so. Exposure can come down a bit more. Contrast, flatten that out a bit, don't too much contrast there. There we go. So there we go, and what I would do on the top there, uh, I would normally do this on an adjustment layer, but uh, just for ease of purpose, just to show you exposure, just bring that in a little bit like so, round the bottom off so it brings your focus point right into this point here. So your eyes are circling around the almost vignette and it sort of circles into the center. So just looking at the center there, we can just put a little bit, and I, I would do these on adjustment levels, but I'm not doing it now. I just want to show you the final look there. Let's bring that down a bit. We can bring a bit of highlight on his face and on the side there. Just create that sharpness. I do think that's a little bit bright in the background there. So let's take that just down a bit. And it's just done to the eye. So it's done to my eyes and just how I feel comfortable with. 
Obviously, I've got a backup of this, but I don't need anything in this background detracting from him. Um, okay, so just on that image brightness contrast, I normally do this as a last minute thing. Brightness down, brightness down, brightness down. Looking at that, contrast down a bit. Okay, just for sharpness to double up. Filter, other, we go to high pass. So on high pass filter there, we're looking very subtle amount of like one or two two three uh, oh it's a bit more than that because the high resolution file let's go to five okay so we're on five pixels there here we go five pixels and then we just drop a soft light overlay on there and if i zoom up a bit on that although it's a sharp picture because it's been through a process you can lose some of the resolution so just on that there might be a bit too much but you just see how a high pass will just intensify the sharpness so what we'll do is we drop that down a little bit Okay, so that is the finished image apart from the ball. So I will bring the image in with the ball and I'll show you that. So just hold on a second. Okay, so um, as you just saw, this is the final image that I liked before putting the ball on. So now I will work with the ball and this is the completed final image that I would send off to the client. And there you go, you can see the colors being brought in, put the ball in and uh, there is a slight difference on the background i brought up the contrast on the background a little bit because it looked i suppose it looked a little bit flat but there you go that's the finished thing there okay so i hope you really enjoyed that i hope it was insightful from your point of view seeing how i work i mean that's just one aspect of what i do uh, I really, really would appreciate it if you'd stick around. If you could subscribe, it'd be really great because it'd allow us to go out and do more. We've got plans of doing all sorts of different things. If you could subscribe, ring the bell, or even just ask some questions about what I do. I'm more than willing to answer some of your questions. So find me the question, subscribe, and let's see you in the next video. So over and out, see you next time.